love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No sh- Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer was good. What's good, man? How you? You all right? What's the word, man? Yeah, man. It's good to have you back. Your Zoom day's running out. No, I check with Nick all the time, man. You just was on Zoom the other day. You was on Zoom yesterday. Man. You got mad Zoom days, B. You, I think you forgot you went on tour back to back for like 20 something days. I spread my shit out a little bit. Sprinkle mine in 40 voice. Sprinkle was, mine a little crazy. bit. Was, that was crazy, killer. If you want to, that's that fine with me. Was you were hack that said you, you spread that you lick yours niggas out. Pause or Yo, some you shit. gonna spread yours mm-hmm. out? And that you was crazy. You were hack I like the taste niggas. Yeah, you were hack that said I like the taste niggas. <laughs> and that, that may be true, but right now, what do you mean when you say you're gonna spread yours out? I, I, I just no, would like to know that. what you think. I said I spread my days. I spread my days out. I said I spread my days out. Yeah. <laughs> now you're, you're fantasizing. That's what that's called. You're fantasizing. <laughs> it's a category called fantasizing. <laughs> and that's what you're doing right now. <laughs> you're taking it too far. You're fantasizing at this point. But I'm fine. If this is how we start, I have no problem with that, bro. I'm, I'm with it. Pause. I'm just making sure you be, you back. Be- <laughs> yeah, I, am, I, ain't, I ain't going nowhere. What's your okay. shirt say? What's your shirt say? What does shirt say, Nick? Can I come see your shirt? Uh, <laughs> just make sure he's thinking. All right, all right. <laughs> we clear. Okay? Just making sure we clear. <laughs> oh, dead. Uh, <laughs> well, we're not gonna. Yo, real, real quick, real quick step before we start. Yeah. Yo, big shout out to to my homegirl Michelle. I, me and Mason's homegirl actually. Yeah. Michelle, she has a tournament up in Harlem called Balling Up in Harlem. It starts Father's Day. Uh, the winning team gets thirty thousand um, dollars. Second and third place gets prizes. Also, it's also going to be twelve and under and girls basketball too. All the unlimited spots are taken up right now. But, um, yeah, it's going to be big uh, at Marcus Garvey um, Park, balling up in Harlem. Shout out to Michelle, a.k.a. Queen of Harlem. And you know it's going to go right some type of way because when I look, when she sent me who's involved, Hunk is still involved. I'm trying some way to get <laughs> nigga, <laughs> nigga, <laughs> yeah. I'm nigga, still, I'm still, I'm little, still getting I'm the still, budget. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, saying you know I gotta do the shirts. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, first like of all, I do the uniforms. Goes, no, no uniforms. Nothing. <laughs> nothing like that goes through Harlem without coming through Hunk office, man. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Shout out to Michelle, Queen of Harlem. Make sure y'all check a tournament out called Balling Up in Harlem and Marcus Garvey Park. Uh, the first game will be Father's Day, man. So big shout out to her for keep doing that thing in Harlem, man. Making us look good. Yeah. Shout out. Dope. Okay, so y'all know we got to start the top of the show yeah. with the women's basketball games that happened last night. The Elite Eight games went crazy. Monday was a stacked schedule. There was LSU versus Iowa, UConn versus USC, LSU lost to Iowa, as people were saying, Angel Reese versus Caitlin Clark, 94 to 87. Just in general, what did you guys think about the game as a whole? And did you think the energy was there? And did you think Mace called it? Stat? Did he call it? Mace did put in text that he had Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was almost it was almost a given. When I looked at her win, my number, 22. You know, Caitlin Clark is wearing my number. And before Cam gets involved, pause, they call her Caitlin Killer Clark. She's running with your name, Killer. So she had my number and your name. So I knew they was going to win. I'm just going to leave it right there. It, it's, 
one lady said, um, what's her name? Carter up at ESPN. She said, it's like a virus. When she gets going, you just got to live with it. <laughs> it was crazy because at, in the beginning, when they jumped out to the league, it was looking like it was going to be a blowout pause. And then they, they, they came back with great energy. Um, Johnson started balling. And then um, Angel Reese was looking like she was being dominant after that first time out. And it just seemed like they just found their stride. And whenever somebody who normally get 10, get 20, you're probably going to lose because they have people playing at an all-time high, especially the people that were role players. They really did their job. And I think me and Killer was talking about that one day. I was like, you know, people on the team, all you got to do is stand there and hit a three. And we're going to win. That's the only thing you got to do. Hit about three threes. And she did exactly that. So I think this really, really, really is bad for um, LSU because Iowa wanted that get back for last year. I got more to say, but I'm, you know, let Killer talk. And then after that, I'll share the rest. Yeah, use what I have to say to act like you got more to say. No, no problem. I do got more to say. That's what we do every no, day. No, That's what no, we do every Cam, day. Just I don't use have time for this. No problem. I, I can I'm just go. To, I'm no trying problem. to throw use you an assist. Say. Okay. Use what I, say. I don't need it. I don't need an assist. I don't need an assist. Okay, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no longer shooting. I'm, I'm no longer night. throwing assists. <laughs> I'm scoring now, okay? Okay. Yeah, because I don't remember nothing you're talking about. I didn't get the text this guy. I didn't get the text. So He never remembers when I'm right. Yeah. Show me the text. It's just it's a still be on group text, right? This has been going on since we were eight years old. You never remember when I'm right. You just never just remember when I'm text. right. Show me the time of the text. Just show me. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't get the text. I would like just like to see proof unless you erase the text messages. I don't know. Why would you erase the text messages? I, I don't know. Maybe you erase yeah. the text messages. So he, he did say it. It was at 420, but I just realized it, it's not in the, it's, it's with, you sent it in the chat with Nick and me. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, how convenient. Yeah, how convenient. Yeah. In how case convenient. they don't win, right? That's how you see it. In, yeah. Case, yeah. in case they don't win, you didn't see it. You would have no. said, or you would say, Kim, that wasn't for you. That, I was going to tell you what really was going to happen. <laughs> that was something different for them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, know I, how I, go. I mean, it was they was acting, they was acting really like you know, they were really acting like they was dogs. So I feel like they should have came and played like dogs, and that that wasn't the case that night. I think Angel Reese played a great game, but once you start being a target, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take everything that comes with that. You gotta take everything that comes with that. Once you start trash talking and doing this and all of that. When you trash talk, people don't show you sympathy when you lose. You know that. That's what else I want. What to did share. you, you, you said when people get 10 and 20, you usually win. What does that mean? I mean, when a, when a role player who normally gets 10 points per game okay, uh, end up play. having okay, like 21, you. they're probably going to win because they're you. having, they're playing the best game of their lives. And remember, um, gotcha. we was talking about, um, I think it was, what's the dude named Edie or something like that? I was like, if he got somebody that hit two or three threes, that's all they got to do mm -hmm. to win the game. So when you're playing with star players like that, all the role player got to do is get nine or ten out of nowhere, ten extra points to win a game. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Everybody needs to play their role there. Um, <laughs> Iowa really shocked me. The role players, that is. That's why I was asking me, so he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And he's 100% correct. The role players came out from the jump, got involved early, um, hit some key shots. Uh, Kaylin Clark came out from the beginning uh, running and gunning. We already knew what she was coming to do, pause. But the role players, like May said, they really stepped up when they needed to step up. Uh, terrible, terrible rebounding output by Iowa. 
they they need they need some big people bad, some big girls down there bad because they are terrible on the rebound. And I'm not they might have just should have lost off offensive rebounds they let get away anyway, but uh the game was exciting. Mason called it to a T. It looked like Iowa was gonna get blown out. Uh um, Kim, Coach Kim called call, um, call hey, timeout. Yeah. And, yeah, and she came out. Angel Reese came out. They they came out beasting on defense. Then they took the lead. And I was like, okay, this don't look good for Iowa. Then Iowa caught a little rhythm. And at halftime, uh, we was all tied up. So I was like, whoever come out in this third quarter uh, is going to win this game. And that's what Iowa did. I think Kaylin Clark hit four threes in the third Hit her first three in a row, three threes in a row. And you could tell the difference. You could tell who was on another plateau and who was still living off the height from last year. And Kayla Clark just looks like every day she wants to get better. It isn't about this game, last tournament, practice the day before yesterday. It looks like she wants to be better at 1 a.m. than she was at midnight. And that's the attitude it looks like <laughs> when I see her play. <laughs> like, y'all, <laughs> no, that ass, like, nah, that's a good was point. At, at, at 1 a.m., yeah, she want to be yeah, better. Yeah, yeah than what she was at midnight. So yeah. when you see that on somebody's face, and, look, she could have carried on. I, her, her father did it for her. I was waiting for all this. Yeah. I was waiting for the... <laughs> that never happened, but you seen her father in the crowd <laughs> doing the... Tony Yayo and all that. So I was happy to see all that because before the game, Angel Reese was like, look, me and Caitlin Kuba, I ain't got no friends in between the lines. When we go on the court, I'm friends with nobody. And I like that attitude. I thought that was nice. But I see after the game when everybody was giving each other five, she tried to whisper and give Caitlin a little. And Caitlin was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't want to whisper anything. I just yeah. want to shake hands yeah. and go cut the net down. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool on the whisper. I, I, I'm good. I got I got other games to play. Yeah, go whisper in the dark. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now. yeah, yeah, I got something to do, man. You enjoy, but what I will say is this before we move on, because I know uh, we're probably going to go to the next game. Um, but what I will say is this Angel Reese did her, her thing, man. She really did to me, and she did decent too. Uh, the girl, Flodge, Flodge, yeah, she did her thing, Flodge, she did all right. She didn't, she wasn't Scotty. She wasn't Scotty that night, yeah. last night, pardon me. And, um, why wasn't she Scotty to you? The eye test, I didn't look at her numbers. I watched that game from beginning to end. She had some key blocks. She made some key, some key, um, shots as well in the first half as well. But Scotty would have, Scotty, if Mike couldn't do it, Scotty say, I got him. Yeah. You know, they, nobody, you know, they put that, that poor little white girl on Caitlin Clark and get destroyed like and that. And she went like this. When she did yeah. this, I knew they was going to lose. When somebody hit a shot I, I on see. you and it's like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, they left that girl out there in the woods, man. <laughs> they did they did our worst than Hustle and Gretel, my nigga. Like it was no reason for her to be out there like that. They need she needed help, and somebody like Flan should have took stepped up and said, "Yo, nah, I got her, I got her." But I get it. Trust that's me, I get it. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. If you Scotty and you Flo, you're supposed to say, "You know what? I'm from New Orleans. I'm the one to shut all this down." Yeah, and, and I didn't see that, and. What happens is this is two things. You like, I'm not getting embarrassed out here, which is one thing where I, I got an attitude like that all the time because, you know, I took pride in my defense. If a nigga caught me slipping, pause and he caught me. I get shook, I get shook. Secondly, that's one thing getting embarrassed 
Two is like getting embarrassed by a white girl. Exactly. Even worse. We, you was talking about that <laughs> earlier in the season. You bet yeah. not let that white girl come out here. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just Do nothing you can say in the to. neighborhood. It's nothing you can go back yeah, to the yeah. hood and say. Right. I, I seen them people from the hood, people parents in there with their hands on their hips. The LSU parents just looking in disbelief. <laughs> I seen the afros flying, the hair not done. I knew parents was in there. I'm not saying they was flying parents, but I knew. I seen them purple shirts and their hands on their hip like this. I know, got that I little know girl running were, around here yeah, going like, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, because you know when you get home, maybe we should just call Caitlin Clark to finish cooking up shit here tonight. Because she's been cooking all damn week. <laughs> <laughs> and you should just do the dishes. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should just go yeah. and finish cooking. Because I'm hungry. You got to deal with that shit in the black household, man. So um, I didn't like the eye test. I don't know if her number said different. I know she had a couple key shots, a couple blocks. But it wasn't the rapper Fly, Fly J. It wasn't, it wasn't the sidekick that Angel Reese. Yeah. It was okay, I'm I'm gonna get a couple moments in the Elite Eight that could get me to the final four. And it just wasn't cutting it. She had twenty three though. Look, she did have twenty three. I my bad, like I said, I'm not I'm not knocking the numbers. I just I stopped going off the eye test. I didn't yeah, know how much she had. And for those yeah, that are watching the eye test says you could have thirty points, but if how it looks is what we're yeah. going off. Because you can have right. 10 points in a in a blowout, right? Pause at the end, and those 10 don't count. And then you had another group of points over here, which was pretty much give me baskets, but really didn't well, affect thank the you game. For, right. Thanks for breaking that down, too, Mace. Because yeah. I, I say that a lot, and people may yeah. not. I never actually gave an yeah. explanation on what that really means. So thank you for... Um, Interpreting that entire audience so they understand. Let me ask you a question real quick. How much did Angel Reese have? She, she had, had about 17. 17 and 20, 20 rebounds. rebounds. 20 rebounds. And yeah, she was looking like she's re rebounding. So so that's that's what I'm saying, Mace. And I know the rebounds count, but Caitlin Clark had more than them combined. Yeah. That's that, the problem. That's what I'm saying. That's that's the problem. Yeah. That, that's, that's what I'm saying problem. when I say the eye test. Yeah. When I say the eye test, I, I seen the rebounds and I and I knew she had a, I think she had like 12, 13 in the first half. But I seen the second half when that third quarter started. I didn't see anybody on that court that wanted to compete with her. So even though it didn't seem like Flage, Flage, Flage? Flage. 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 Flage, pardon me. Even though it seemed like, okay, it looks up. She got a steal. She got a block. She got some points. It's not an equivalent to what Caitlin Clark is doing on the eye test. Mm -hmm. On the eye test. Then you go to the box store, and we're not diminishing what rebounds, assists, or steals, or any of that means. But if we're going off points, and Angel Reese is this all-star, and Flage is this up-and-coming all-star, and she got more than them combined and an elite eight to go to the final four. This is the difference between all stars and superstars. Yeah. On the biggest stage possible, against the biggest competition possible. They give the biggest output possible mm -hmm. with the least amount of talent, probably on any team in the NCAA. And no disrespect to our teammates, but you know, it is what it is. She just had her shoulders above everybody else out there. Yeah. So congratulations to Iowa. Yeah, congratulations go out to Iowa and thank you for showing up to LSU. And this goes back to the conversation we had earlier in the season when Angel Reese was not present on that team and we was trying to figure out where were she. Is is these these moments when you lose, it comes back to those things that didn't allow you to have that continuity that you needed here today. And it just is almost like the guy playing on a free throw line that the coach is telling everybody to shoot free throws, and then you end up losing the game with those free throws. Um, I'll say that for
for that game for LSU, obviously Angel Reese was the best defensive player on that team and Flage was the best offensive player. She did outscore everybody on her team. But going back to the game, I'm actually putting a lot more blame on LSU's coach because Monkey. yeah, I feel like during that game, she was Caitlin, Caitlin Clark is an amazing two way player. She was unstoppable. She was the person that needed to be beat for LSU to win. And I think they took way too long to make adjustments to their game plan because why is, you know, Haley Van, Van with trying to, you know, guard against Caitlin Clark, yeah. knowing that she's, she was, she was too small. She looked like she was struggling and they're flaming her on Twitter right now because she didn't look good. Like that was not yeah. a good performance from her. And that's not the best of her. She actually is a good player. But when you see that game, it looks like she can't do nothing. Like it looked like she's not ready for a game like that. And that's not something that you need to see for an LSU team. So I feel like that should have been stopped way earlier, closer to fourth quarter than they started trying to put two people against Caitlin Clark. They should have did that way earlier in the game because trying to do that last minute, it's like, that's not going to work. Like, Caitlin Clark's already on a roll. You're not stopping her from the long yeah. range. Caitlin Clark doesn't even need to get into the paint. She can shoot from, you know, from the three they way will. back. Like, they should have been stopping her. So I felt like that came down to the coach to be like, look, we're going to do this. We're going to change this around. Yes, you know, Angel Reese is playing aggressively in the paint, which is great. But Caitlin Clark is not there. Yeah. <laughs> I could have won that game as the coach, honestly. All they needed to do was go to the classic 1-3-1 one, one defense zone and put somebody tall at the top of that that one three one. So then Caitlin Clark would not be getting that set shot off against somebody that's taller because they would change that shot. Every time and every time she would swing it and the ball would end up in the corner, the way it works, the the faster person that's on the other side would drop back and then everything they were doing would be shut down. All you had to do was Make it to where Caitlin Clark drives. If she drives, they don't beat you. Because even there, there's, there was other tall young ladies on that team that could have changed the shot as well. But when you got somebody small on a six-foot guard that is prolific, right? You, that was a and recipe they, for exactly. disaster. If I was coaching that team, even if we was going man-to-man, -man, the first person that's supposed to be guarding her from the jump is float. Flage. Well, yeah, it is supposed to be Flage. And they're and supposed then, to be is, denying yeah. her the ball. Somebody's supposed to be denying her the ball. We're going to make somebody else beat yeah. us. She's not even going to touch the ball yeah. for at least six minutes of yeah. each quarter. And if somebody's running around just guarding her, it, they, they would have been up 18 at right. least. Yeah, because at that point, it just became way too easy for Iowa. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, not even at the three full. She's... Yeah, because if Each you play. kick the ball out of her hand, everybody else is erratic. They're running around trying to get shots. And I don't want to give the the um, the um play of how to beat Iowa, but that's an easy team to beat if you understand, if you understand coaching. Honestly. I wouldn't I wouldn't say easy, but I get easy. what you're saying in that aspect, yes. But Caitlin Clark is a generational talent, and that's why she is so good yeah, at what she does, because she performs well in big moments like this. I know. It would have been very different if LSU would have took the took the dub instead, but for them winning, it's like, all right, like Caitlin Clark, regardless of whether her teammates perform well or not, she does this. She can't score without the ball. Yes, that too. But still, like, I'm just saying that, yes, that could be fixed with coaching. They could have definitely yeah. stopped her earlier on. But with that mentality, the way that she plays, the way that she perform, her humbleness, just everything about how she performs shows that, like, regardless, and I get it, she needs yeah. the ball to score. That's when you need a Pat Beverly type <laughs> player that just stays on her, doesn't let her get the ball. That's your only job. She doesn't yeah. get the ball. And every time she get the ball, you double. And she yeah. got to kick the ball to somebody else. Right. Somebody else Which, is going to beat us tonight. Right. It's not going to be Caitlin Clark. Right. That's the overall consensus of said, understanding. You yes. said Della Dovich. <laughs> yeah, one of them type of names. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, definitely shout out to Iowa. Um, next game we got to discuss. UConn beat USC 80 to hold 73. On hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. Sorry. What's the name? And you know, I'm super, I'm pro-black. I love giving black women opportunity. I love black people. You know that. And I see why Stat won the double N the NCAA PC award. 
<laughs> took the onus off the black girls and put it on the white lady <laughs> and said, it's not Angel Reese's fault and Flange's fault. It's the white coach fault. <laughs> uh, I didn't say it that specifically. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fucked up. That, we that's call that up. reverse racism <laughs> on oh, this show. If you look back, a lot of things didn't make sense. And that was one of them that yeah, people aren't yeah. talking about. The coach, yes, you know, Angel Reese could have performed better. Flage could have performed better. But at the end of the day, it's up to Kim Oki to be like, this is what we're doing. Let's let's get it right. Because everybody would just... <laughs> I don't think there was so much... I don't think there was a lot more that Angel Reese could have done. Because she was already close to a 2020 game. Right. That's what she's supposed to show up with. It was those moments. I'm telling you, it was a defensive moment. Where where you take over the game, it's like we're we're here to win the game. Everybody knows that championship sells. I mean, offense sells tickets, but championship. I mean, defense, defense wins win championships. championships. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta have defense. Yeah. You gotta have defense, and when it come down to that, it's like they gave up all of these rebounds, and she it was just poor defense on both teams, and she just shot them out the gym. But when you got that many big bigs on the team and people with that much wingspan on the wings, they supposed to challenge all those shots. But you had the little people up front. This is that game where somebody who normally plays does not play. We're here for the win. So if you're not getting it done, you got to come out the game. I would have definitely put, I don't know who, who was the other big up there, but whoever was moving agile, number 12 or one of them, on top of that key. Who was that? Man, racist stat. Yeah. That's all I'm just telling you. I that don't think so. Racist. Yeah, you're I definitely think racist. If you look back, you're going to be like, why didn't they change Markey's the play a earlier? <laughs> she's a champion. She's a champion before she even got that list. She got yeah. championships before she got there. Right. You know well, didn't she, she coach Baylor? Or one of them two. Yeah, won the championship. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. won the chip. Yeah, don't throw Kim Markey under the bus like that or you know, some black shit. It's cool. I'm with all that. It's cool. I dig it. Stat. All right, y'all. Next game. Oh, UConn yeah, beat man. USC 80 to 73. <laughs> what do you guys think about the Huskies advancing to the final four? That was not as surprising as the first game, even though I picked them. I mean, right now, Me too. everybody knows that UConn. Okay. Is gonna is gonna be should be in the chip in both categories, men and women. Um, I think it's a foregone conclusion. I Cam was talking about it the other day when he was talking about um how they said um it's Connecticut versus the Phil. So they basically think that they should be they they're playing against themselves if they don't mess up as men, and I think the women. They're not as good as the men, but the only teams that could beat them is is um South Carolina. I don't think there's anybody else that could beat UConn women. I don't. I don't. Now UConn will make the the defensive change against Caitlin Clark. And watch and see what I tell you. They will. Gino gonna be listening to me. What's his name? Gino gonna be listening to me. G- G- Not Gino, Gino Smith, you said. <laughs> <laughs> Gino steak and cheese. Gino Philly cheese steak better be listening to me. Make the difference. I'm telling you. You don't want to be sad going home. And we already know what need to happen. Killer, who you who you got in the women's? I got South Carolina winning everything, but as far as I, this is a game I want to see, I don't, I don't, I don't have a clear cut winner on Connecticut and Iowa um, because to me, Caitlin Clark is by far the best player in college basketball right now. But Gino Oriema, the head coach of the Connecticut Huskies females team, makes not Gino Smith. He, um, He's going around saying he got the best player in college basketball. Talking about Paige. Yeah. And she she might have been considered the best at one time or the best prospect, but she got hurt for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And her, while she's been hurt, everybody's been coming ar- around. You have 
the Juju uh, Watsons, you have the Caitlin Clarks, you have the Angel Reese's, you have the Flages, you have all these new players that's been coming up age since she's been hurt. And Gino been going around pumping since the tournament started that he has the best female college basketball player right now in the world. So he doesn't know what anybody else is talking about. And for them to get to the final four right now, being a great USC team, they had a great run. Uh, they're young now, plenty of time to do it. I think uh, Juju, she had a great season, and I look forward to our sophomore year coming up. But that being said, I think that Caitlin don't like what Gino said. And I think that he really may believe it, that that girl may be close to Caitlin Clark. He know it ain't Caitlin Clark. But, you know, like Mark Jackson told us, Mark Jackson told us before, when he when he played with the Knicks, that uh, Rick Pitino told him he's the best guard in the country, in the, in the, in the NBA. And that's a guard. And he that's believed a, that's it. A, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and that's a that's a team with Matt, and that's a league with Magic Johnson playing at the time, Isaiah Thomas playing at the time. You know, it was a plethora of nice point guards, but he believed what his coach told him. And Gino, I'm not saying he believe he doesn't believe it, but he know that girl can't fuck with Clay Caitlin. Now she nice, she good, but I think this is gonna be a goodie because it's both deflections for the connection. This is going to be pure whiteness <laughs> to see who's the purest <laughs> white female basketball player in America. This is white on white. This is like, yeah, and that's you can't racist. get no you white. You can't say that. <laughs> Whatever, nigga. What, black on black, nigga? You can say black on black. No, no, I'm sitting this dead ass. This is for the purest of white. This is like, this is like, Brooke Shields <laughs> against, you know, this is Britney Spears versus whoever's Brooke the Shields, whitest Brooke out there. Shields is the yeah, guy. yeah, Brooke Shields, yeah, Brooke Shields and Britney. This is this is, this the, is Paul McCartney versus yeah, yeah, Bruce yeah, Springsteen. yeah, yeah. This exactly. This is the purest of white basketball female players, and we're gonna see who's the best. And I don't. And for me, I think Caitlin Clark gets offended when you say anybody's better than her, let alone another white girl. She might take that all the way out of a yeah, sense. Like, I think now y'all playing games. I think Caitlin thinks games. she's black a little bit. She think don't compare yeah. nobody white to me. Only black people. Yes, exactly. Look, I was going 100%. That's what I was alluding to because I heard this when Isaiah Thomas, this uh, old Isaiah Thomas, tell a story. <clears throat> about Larry Bird and he said the game was about to start and Larry Bird walked up to him and was like yo who's y'all being mad disrespectful who's this white guy guarding so he was like he was laughing he's like no I'm serious like <laughs> why do y'all got a white guy guarding me I'm dead serious and Isaiah was laughing and he said he said Larry Bird tossed them all game and disrespected him because he told him they disrespecting you for having a white guy guard me anyway yeah. So he said, I remember Isaiah said the next year, he said, yeah, we got somebody for you now. He said, who? He said, yeah, that's my man, Dennis Rodman. And, and Larry Bird rolled his eyes and said, okay, I guess he's a little better than <laughs> whoever homeboy was. <laughs> but I really believe Caitlin Clark looks at shit like this, like, yeah. why would why would, why would would y'all ain't going to put Flage on me so y'all let me abuse this girl right here? Yeah. I bet it's like, it's like, uh, when Roy Jones' murder used to beat people up and look at the ref and say, so you're not going to stop this? Yeah. All right, back. <laughs> I'm going to start acting stupid <laughs> dude, since you don't want to stop the fight. <laughs> and that's how I looked at it. But this is going to be, see who's the best in the country. Uh, and I'm, on this, I'm, I'm using the, the white card and the white privilege, yeah. so to speak. But the, both of these girls are really, really good basketball players. Really good. Yeah, but Kaylin is saying her she's tactical. Her skill set is black. That's what she's trying to tell Paige. Paige, if you're listening to mm -hmm. this, Kaylin is saying her skill set is black and she's tactical. So don't come out <laughs> there unless you're ready for that tactical. 
Yeah, but it's another game I'm interested in seeing. It's a very, very, very good game that I want to see. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. And then as far as like UConn versus USC, obviously, I just feel like on the floor, UConn was the better team. Now USC, you know, all eyes are on Juju Watkins, who did still play well. She's very emotional after losing, but she still is a freshman. And honestly, one of the, if not the best freshman guard out Mm -hmm. there for women. So like shout out to them as well. But UConn, it might be it's Paige's time. So we'll see what happens um, for the next game. And then before we go to break, we want to talk about one more college basketball related topic. So right now there's actually genuine NFL interest in North Carolina State basketball star DJ Burns from mm-hmm. GMs. Considering his role being a college men's basketball player, what do you guys think about GMs even expressing interest to him? I heard some I heard some wild things about about him because I didn't know these things about football. So they was they was asking killer about pause, his about his behind and all of that. They was like, oh, he could be a great player in football. He got power. And this was um Pat McAfee and them and shout out to the Pat McAfee show, but they was talking about is behind and all that, saying he got a lot of force. He could be <laughs> in a certain position and make wow. like thirty million a year. I was like, "Yo, this is crazy!" And and it seemed like all everybody that came on the mic, pause. They they all said the same things. Like they echoed the same sentiments that you know, the way he's built pauses more for football than it is for basketball, and he might want to just leave basketball after this game and just focus on football if he's able to make the arm change, especially if he can make 30-something million a year um, and still play a professional sport. And there's a guy that did that. Um, What team is that? I think it was... um, It might be the Eagles. A guy that came from basketball or, or one of those, rugby or something. Huh? Who was it? But it was a guy that came from rugby. I know I know that because there's a there's a guy that came from rugby. See? Jordan Maylotta played rugby in Australia. Yeah, see? That's why they got the expert here, Killer. That's why I'm here. What do you think, Killer? People that's experts don't have to keep saying they're experts. People know that they're experts. People who say they're experts aren't really experts because they have to keep reminding themselves that they're experts. So that's what I think about you keep saying you're experts. Yeah, experts, you don't have to keep saying that people people would know that already. But you're constantly saying that you're experts. So <laughs> I think it's I think it's wild niggas see a man ass and be like, yo, you can make 30 million home. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is why I don't watch just, ESPN, but that's what they were talking about. And they kept niggas going. Say, Yo, Tim, you, you see that man backside? He can make. <laughs> he can make thirty million. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like they knew what they were talking about, so I, you know. But, yo, listen, Pat McAfee used to play football, and I love his show too. Um, I'm just saying the way you do, I didn't see it, so. Well, yeah, and I'm not accusing you, but you delivering the message. It's like, yeah, I didn't know how to listen. Backside. I didn't know how to listen. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean, yeah, me too. They said they keep looking at the man. Thighs and backside. That's a thirty million dollar backside right there. Boys. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, listen, man. Um I I heard about this story uh yesterday afternoon. I didn't really dive into it too much because look, we know that uh NC State is is um Cinderella. They lost fourteen games this year, baby. Yeah. 14 games to be in the final four right now. That's probably unheard of. I don't even, I don't even know a team that lost probably 10 games to get to the final four. So first of all, congratulations to them. Secondly, if they lost 14 games, he can't be that good of a basketball player because he allowed his team to lose 14 games this year in college basketball. I think he had a great game out of the day. 
Um, I don't know if he played football before. I don't know how good he is in basketball. I did see the game that he played. He bust their ass. Uh, pause. He had a nice touchy uh, around the basket. Uh, you know, real gentle pause around the rim. Floaters, good touch off the backboard. It looked good for the one game that I did see of him. I can't say and say I act like I know his basketball or football background. But the people who were talking about him possibly being a football player, I would take their word because Pat McAfee not only knows a bunch of football players, he's actually played football as well. So if he says he got the whatever he said for it, I, I would take him at his word. I would have to do some more homework to see exactly what's up. But what I would say, homeboy, is take advantage of this opportunity that you have right now playing in the Final Four and try and win while you can because, trust me, once you lose, nobody knows you no more and they don't care. They do yeah. not care once you lose. So I would take advantage of the opportunity that's before you right now and ride that out, pause as long as you can. And if you're at least an NBA or at least uh, overseas playing in Europe, possibly, or if at least an uh, NFL tryout. Ride it to the wheels fall off, homie. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually not even mad at that answer because he's literally 6'9", and he's 275 pounds. Like, if people are looking at him, like you said, take the opportunity because that's, that's a big dude. He could be a good offensive tackle, linebacker, yeah. something like that. He can run, so exactly. some team, I promise you, needs him. Okay, so we're going to go to break. Yo, murder. Yeah. Murder. It's a nigga. Nigga, I know, man. I don't know if you know Bear from, from Drew Hamilton, about seven feet. Yeah. Yeah, Brian McKenney one time was uptown with the nigga Hud. No, Brian McKenney used to play football and shit. And he asked her who he was. And he's like, yo. Because he's standing in front of the projects all day. He used to. My nigga, Bill, this is my nigga, too. Yeah. And he's like, yo, that nigga right there is seven feet, about 280, 290. Tell him, I, if he come play for the practice team, I can, he'll make $300,000 a year just mm-hmm. on the practice team. <laughs> nigga, nigga, Bill said, fuck, I look like running around tackling niggas all day. Fuck out of here. <laughs> and stood, and stood right there on the corner, ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Some niggas don't want to be tackling niggas all day, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just giving an example of niggas' size who say, yeah. fuck, you look like running around tackling niggas all day, but standing in front of projects at the same time. You got to love Harlem niggas. You yeah, Harlem seven niggas feet. That's why niggas. I start laughing. I know something yeah. stupid. Yeah. Was said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I look around. Look like tackling niggas all day. <laughs> Mind you, this nigga, I go up to the project apartment, which ain't nothing wrong with the project apartment, but when you're seven feet, that shit type small. Okay. So we're going to just remind no, you're, that. <laughs> no, you're good. That's a great story to share. We're going to go to break, and when we return, we will discuss a Chiefs player who might be in some trouble. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Why am I in this free? Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day tonight. The Bucks will play the Wizards. Underdog Fantasy has Giannis at seven and a half first quarter points. Give him higher or lower, Mace. Seven and a half points? First quarter. Giannis? Yes. Against who? The Wizards. Of course, seven points. He should have he should have higher, higher. Okay. Cam? No lower. Okay. Chris Middleton is at 29 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. You have him higher or lower, Cam? 
He should be high. Yeah, high. Who's going to stop Giannis on, on the Wizards? Nobody. No. <laughs> he could have 15 if he wants. Right. Okay, and then... No, I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think it's about him not being able to get it. Oh. Just one of them games you try and get everybody involved. It's the Wizards. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't saying he couldn't have it. You're right. He got 20 in the first quarter, but it's one of them... Yo, get Lopez going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and Jordan Poole is at five and a half first quarter points. Do you have him higher or lower Mace? Hmm... The Jordan I used to know would have five points, more than five. Used to know. The Jordan today, I'm going to go. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, even though there's no benefit of doubting. Higher. Cam? I'm going to go low. We don't even know if that name going to start the night. The coach be throwing him in oh, the star yeah. lineup sometime. Sometime oh, don't yeah. be in the star lineup. So I'm going low. Who knows if he might? He may not even play in the first quarter. Okay, download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So before we even get into the topics, I know we started a discussion. Speaking of not giving everybody the benefit of the doubt, yes. Angel Reese. Matter of fact, start you. Yeah, you was you was man. Let, we we talking off air. Let's just give it to the people for us on how we was talking. Stat, you was off air. Me and Mace had a couple things to chime in just on our opinion. Yeah, uh, we know that you usually save this for check out the stat at three p.m. <laughs> Eastern on Fridays on on the Come and Talk to Me Network. We get that, but why were you upset up for Angel Reese? You were yeah. Saying? So first, I want to preface. I wasn't upset because people are going to take that and be like, she's being so sensitive. Da, da, da. Well, guys, it's a discussion. Just so mean? y'all know. What is preface, preface? Like the disclaimer. Okay. But preface is my okay. terminology. All right. Basically, we were talking about Angel Reese, some quote saying that, I don't know the exact quote. She says she's human. She said she's human. And I basically said that she is. I basically feel like Angel Reese gets a lot of unnecessary hate because I just feel like She's doing her thing. She's playing basketball. I know that people have unnecessary comments and I know that she's now a public figure. She's more than just a person. She's more than just a basketball player. But I feel like she's valid to be upset and not want people to, you know, make the comments that they make towards her because she's just trying to play ball. Yeah. But you guys said. I said, I said um, she, she received the fame. She received the accolades. And now she's learning to accept what else comes with it because it all comes together. So if you if you want to turn away from the responsibilities and the and the um, expectations, then you would have to also turn back over the accolades because that's what comes with the accolades. Mm -hmm. When people pay you a lot of money, whether it's in the WNBA or whether they pay her in the through NIL deals, they're expecting something. Mm -hmm. So that's just what comes with it. So a lot of times when people are celebrated, they're excited and they receive it all. Right. When the criticism and the expectation comes, they want out of that. That's that accountability yeah. we, we keep talking about. Right. So it's like it's heavy, it's heavy, but you're getting paid heavy. Right. That's what comes with the heavy pay, a heavy crown. Yeah. And then I think real quick before you give your point, Kim, I was basically saying that I feel like in Angel no, Reese's... Stop, cause you had a lot to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah say it. <laughs> no, no, like... No, no, so, man, to, you, it, was you was toughing up at, at, during the commercial break. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm trying to remember exactly what I said. Basically, I was saying that... Like, people are not... You were saying people can't handle all of that. Yes. I was basically saying Angel Reese didn't sign up for this. I don't think everybody is built for this lifestyle. I don't think everybody can handle it. And I think in her... I don't want to use the term breaking point because I don't think that's the word. But I just think that a lot of it towards her is unnecessary. And I, I'm not going to say I completely understand because I'm, I'm not an athlete. So, you know, criticism is is thrown in different ways. Yeah. But it's just like when you're just doing, you know, something that you love to do and then it's just always unnecessary comment after unnecessary comment, I'm just like, dang, like, she's just trying to play ball. Because I just feel like other people really don't get that same sort of, 
you know, commentary reactions that she does. And get. you know why she gets it? That that goes back to the accountability. Yeah. Because once you want, you don't get to be a trash talker and get mm-hmm. sympathy. Mm-hmm. You would know that if you're if you're from the hood, you don't get to be a trash talker and get sympathy when you lose. Right. That's that's what comes with the trash talking. When you're winning, you're on the good side of the trash talking, right? Right. So when you lose, you want everybody to be pious, right? And but, and and deities. But also, even when she was winning, like, and I know people are gonna hate regardless. It was no, still. What's this? What's this? It was still, but it was still. What's you're, this? You're classless. What's this? You're classless, and it's what's like this? I, if you lit, you lit. Like, and then when you lose, like, okay, you, like I'm gonna be mad too, but it's just still unnecessary. I like things. that. When you lit, you lit. <laughs> So you don't get to unlit yourself. That's what Cam would say. Yeah. You don't get to unlit yourself. Once you become a public figure and you're everywhere, this is what Cam was saying. I don't want to take his words. Cam, you share it. No, you guys, no, we look, we got the same mind. You never really take yeah. my words because half the time we finish each other's yeah. sentences anyway. What I was saying was that it's no off button. When, when you can't turn it off when you want to turn off fame or notoriety or being a public figure or whatever it is, you can't be like, I right, enough today. I don't feel like it. <laughs> you know, and that's why sometimes people are prisoners of their own success. And I wouldn't let that be me. Like me, me personally, I love and I thank God all the time for where my level of success is. And where I'm at and I wouldn't want to change my success for anything in the world because um, I still go out and people want my picture, autograph, everything. But I know I still, still certain places in the world I know I could go where I could just creep what be cool where I don't want to be bothered. It's certain mm-hmm. places certain people can go where they're just, and not saying they're a prisoner, but they just never going to avoid it. Like, I, you know, me and Mace was talking and I, I was late to, I miss actually missed that show um two weeks ago when I was on a three weeks ago I was on a flight with Mike Tyson. You don't know what annoying somebody till you're next to Mike Tyson. Mike, <laughs> Mike, yo Mike, Mike, do this Mike, make a muscle, Mike, give me one of these. Mike, Mike, Mike. I'm like, God damn, yo, yeah. this is kinda wild. It's no it's nowhere to go if you're Mike Tyson yeah. <laughs> where somebody doesn't know you. But you know what? Mike smiled every picture. He hugged every lady. He made the muscle when they asked him to make a muscle because he knows that's part of the game. Look, when I say this all the time, is that <laughs> it's, it's seriously true. what I say. Yeah, for real. Because what I say all the time is this. Whenever I get, whenever in this real spill, Whenever I, I get say, damn, I don't want to take this picture. I don't feel like talking to these people or fuck this. I don't feel like it. Unless I'm eating or I'm in a movie theater, I'll take the picture. I'll sign the autograph. I hug the lady or whatever, because I could be sitting in traffic for an hour and a half to go work for somebody that I know I'm smart in for eight hours and then go back home in the same hour and a half traffic to only go to sleep to do that again the next day. Yeah. When you know you're smarter than the nigga that you work for. So <laughs> if I just got to take a picture and hug somebody and give somebody a five, back. Yeah. Because <laughs> it could be, it could be way, 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 way worse, man. It's nothing worse than working for somebody you know you're smarter than and you got to act like they're smarter than you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that shit it was probably the most annoying shit in the world. I wouldn't know. I always it's like one of my worst nightmares in the world. <laughs> like wake up out of cold sweat, like, oh shit, I thought I was working for somebody. <laughs> and that shit is scary. Yeah. But at the end of the day, serious. It's like <laughs> that ass. So to know that's that why I said thank day. God. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, that's why I said thank God, Joe. Like yeah, I, yeah. I know I joke a lot, but I'm dead ass serious. I, I really yeah. thank God. Because think about this, like, think about another person, like, think about Eminem. Where can he go? Like, yo, I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, when you got the complexion for the connection, and white people and black niggas know you. Yo, that's Eminem. That's Eminem. Yo, my nigga. And listen, some people are built for that. Some people are. I'm not saying yeah. he isn't. It's just that I want. I got. I would like a cap on my shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To where, 
sometimes you wish you could turn on, but at the same time, you just can't. Yeah, you so can't. I know I was all over the place when it comes to my situ- situation and scenario. So I would never trade my shit in, but I understand some people where you'd be like, yo, it's too much. They're harassing her, this, that, and the third. And Mace made a great point. The shit talkers, they can't wait. They can't wait for you yeah. to lose. Right. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd Mayweather, you know, he doesn't fight that often. But I'll say towards the end of his career, I would say 75 to 80 percent of the people that went to his fight was going to see him lose. Just to see him lose. Because he talked so much shit. He was undefeated. Yeah, and he was money. They can't wait to see May. Yeah, yeah, May. Money. Weather. Yeah, May. money. May. Weather. Weather. Yeah. <laughs> so, so niggas like, I'm sick of this nigga. I'm going to see this nigga lose. <laughs> and he knew it. That, that people would come see him lose, but he knew how to market himself and knew yeah. how to sell the fight and knew how to ma- maximize the dollar. So to Mason's point, I get what you're saying too, Stat. You're like, fuck, B. She just came to play basketball. And you can, and you know who does that? Or used to? It's Beast Mode. I, I'm only here so I don't get fucked. <laughs> I'm only here for that one. He, don't, he ain't with a bunch of shit talking. He scored a touchdown in the, in the end zone. He walk over and shake your hand like a businessman. It ain't no celebration. They run up to him all excited. You know, calm down. It's business. But once you go over the top, they're going to treat you over the top. Yeah, right. So um, it's just no. My last phrase is this. My my man, Bang, cousin Bang told me this, man. And it was a time because he's really cool with Kanye. And it was a time years and years ago before whatever Kanye's going through now, he was going through some other shit. And I was like, damn, man, they kind of bugging me. He looked over at me, murder, and he said, Cam, the game don't come with instructions and walked off. <laughs> so you, you're right about that. This shit do not come with no instructions, yeah. man. Every, everybody got to figure their own shit out right. yeah. as it goes <laughs> along because your success is not necessarily my success or your success that is not Nick's success and Nick's success is not his home. Everybody got to figure their own shit out. It's no instructions with this shit. Right. Everybody's game is different. Right. And you really can't and you really can't complain about it because I know I used to be like that. Like it's exactly what Reese was saying. But it's like once you took the success and the money came, you got to deal with all of these things that came right. with it because I ain't sign up for that neither. But right. you did. You just didn't right. know you signed up for right. it. And a lot of things happen that you don't realize because like you said, there is no on and off button. And I really like love when we have these conversations because like even for me, right? Like I've entered a space that I've never entered before and never even thought I would be entering, came straight out of college. And like for me, it's a blessing just to even be able to hear things from both of you because like I don't think you guys understand the magnitude of being able to have you two both in my corner, me not knowing what the hell I'm doing, right? moving cross country to a whole new position. You feel me? Like, and at least being like, if I have a sort of question I can ask y'all, you know, like I still like always try to figure things out myself and we'll do things like that. And there is no guidebook. And for Angel Reese, I don't know her position, but I promise you she doesn't have a guide. Like nobody teaches you how to like enter fame and be a basketball player and be a college student. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like all at the same time. So I'm not saying like, she deserves some sort of sympathy, but I can definitely understand her position of probably being lost and not knowing, you know, what to do with that. Because you, a lot of people, you can't ask questions to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that means like, we got to do more. That means we got to do more counseling because that's like I, Cam, me, anybody. Like when we walk out, people don't even ask me can they take pictures. They just walk up to me with video. Yeah. I don't get to fix my hat. Yeah. I don't get to fix myself. Right. <laughs> it's already live. Right. And you like, yo, bro, I, I used to get mad about yeah. that. Like, yo, yo, don't do that. Right. Because in my mind, I'm thinking You're I'm like, in the hood, but yeah. I'm not in the hood. They're right. seeing Mace. They're like, yo, smile, nigga. Do the, what you normally do <laughs> on TV. Do that I right ain't no now. puppet. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> 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 What? Yeah, listen. I used to be, I used to be like that too. But you gotta realize, you got with, with, with sometimes, and I can't tell anybody how to be who they are as a celebrity. Yeah. I'm not talking. I'm talking about Mace or that. Sometimes you gotta put yourself. And we've been doing this so long 
that we forget that we were the person that'd be excited if we see somebody because yeah. we've been on forever. So sometimes you got to rewind to that 17 year old kid who's seen, oh shit, Russell Simmons, this is my shot. Oh, oh shit, Jermaine Dupree, I'm going to his part. Whatever. Sometimes a nigga may be 35 when they meet you. This is the only time <laughs> they got to see you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, it was I, a time when niggas get excited when they see niggas. We've just been doing this so long that it's really like, yo, when you see another celebrity, you say what's up and let's y'all have some conversation because you, you, you're giving them. Yeah, you don't want to be like the person that that um, ruins somebody's moment yeah. when they just met you. Yeah. And they had this whole big idea of who you were. And, yeah. And you mess it all up. No, I definitely get that. And it's funny because that's the world that I'm entering, right? So, yeah. like, for me, I still get excited, like, when I meet certain people, I'm not going to disclose who, and obviously I play it cool. And even on the other end, like, when people get excited to see me, I'm like, oh. Like, like people coming up taking pictures with me I'm like oh like, cause like for me my world is like work yeah, you know like saying you. like and I, I it doesn't click like it's like in Angel Reese's perspective I just showed her to play basketball me I'm like I'm, I'm just doing my job like I'm talking about sports doing something that I love to do and then I'm like yeah. oh people actually you know it's two different worlds that sometimes it doesn't connect yeah. and I feel and like for her she, it might have not connected and what I'm saying is when she started taking the NIL deals you're not just playing ball. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, is a, it, a yeah. great point. That's the part yeah. that they're leaving out. Oh, I ain't signed up for this. Yes, you did. When you <laughs> signed that NIL deal and they start offering you the money as a brand. Right. As a brand, you became responsible right. for all of the things you don't want to deal with right. right now. And that's why, I, like I said, we got to start doing more more um, help with people. And, yeah. And we're here. And we joke and play a lot, but... Ask Cam, DM me, anybody. We're we're here to help yeah. the next generation. That's seriously an amazing point. I'm very happy you said that because I, mm-hmm. I think you don't even understand. A lot of us be lost. And I know yeah. a lot of people need help and don't know where to start. And I'm not saying that you guys are just going to, here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. But like some, even just like watching the show, like these are gems that people can take and like mm-hmm. internalize in different ways. Let me, Cam, I know you had let a Let me tell you something. Yeah, last thing. Let me tell you something about Andrew Reese, right? And you saying she dealing with a lot, and this is and <clears throat> this would be my last point when it comes to this. She waited till she lost to do this. Osami, the tennis player, Osami, what's her name? Naomi Osaka. Black, yeah. Naomi Osaka left when she was winning for mental health issues because she yeah. didn't know how to do it. She left when she was winning. What's the black gymnastic girl's name? Busting ass. She she quit, shorty. Simone, black girl, Bates. Simone Biles. The, the, yeah, I was yeah, like, she left. She yeah, she left too. Mental shit. It's too much. It's too much to deal with. Not get that. But they didn't wait till they lost to be like it's too much. They lost. They left when they won. Yeah, and I'm not saying Angel Reese is about to leave. But it just seems like a pity party yeah. when you wait to break. And I'm, I'm, and don't get me wrong, people. I know, I know what Angel Reese is going through. But you know, when we us shit talkers, we kind of be like, "Yo, come on, suck it up," because we got a heart too. <laughs> don't yeah. get it wrong. But when you do it right after you lose, people kind of tend <laughs> to be like, "Come on, right. you, you just <laughs> lost." When when Naomi, the tennis player, left, and the girl Simone Biles. They both took mental health breaks from their sport when they were at the height of their sport. Number yeah. one. So when I see that, I'm like, nah, this shit is overbearing. This is overbearing. Like Mace left when he number one rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like when niggas leave when they number one, you can't really say nothing. Yeah, that means it was really <laughs> caused too much for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was really too much. If that girl... The tennis player just won um uh, it's Wimbledon US Open, but then it was US Open. Other girl just won the gold medals. Niggas was like, yo, I'm chilling out. I'm bugging. I I I'm I'm going through something. I don't want to <laughs> use the word bugging because yeah. they was really going through something. No disrespect. They was really going through something. But they left at the height of their shit. They didn't wait till the game was over. It was like, Yeah. I ain't win this shit, blah, blah, blah. So I, I'm not disagreeing with your point when Angel Reese are feeling bad. I'm not saying I don't feel empathy. 
for Angel Reese. I'm just saying it just comes in bad timing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right after you lose the game. Yeah. When you're and, a shit talker. And what I was thinking about was if you want to know if what Cam and I just shared was the truth, just ask yourself, if they won this game, what dance would they have been doing? <laughs> and you could start seeing what they would have been doing. What songs the would they have been playing? Back to back. Talk. Yeah. You want to run your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Niggas, you niggas, know they would have been going crazy, right? Niggas, Skip niggas and doing the, the doing the Ja Morant. Yeah, the gritty. Yeah. The gritty. Niggas, <laughs> niggas, niggas fucked the playlist up. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> niggas fucked the playlist up, man. Yeah. They would have definitely been playing back to back. Yeah. Well, yeah. these are great points. I, I can't even disagree because I, I know how it looks. So I'm like, yeah, but I like that we can have these discussions. And I hope you guys are really What's the dance they taking be doing when they be... these. I don't. Yeah. Mm. All that whole thing. <laughs> 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 You'll be on TikTok, <laughs> huh? Doing, you know something. They'd have been going he crazy, right? What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been going crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Monkey would have even been hitting one of those dances. That's why you can't Dad. really... Show no pity to that. I'm dead. <laughs> well, this is a great conversation, but unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you all for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh, 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 like when they doing them two for five.